Now another topic which is the absolute favorite of your examiners as all these conventional studies barium studies when done for the bowel and ivu mcu studies when done for the urinary tract so here was some one such question which was asked patient presents with neck swelling and regurgitation with gurgling sound when pressed over the neck this gives us a clue so some swelling right which when pressed gave a gurgling sound so something related to bowel probably with retained contents within it barium swallow was performed and is revealed here so what do you see on this particular barium image if you see this is how the esophagus is this is how the esophagus is and there's a posteriorly directed out pouching from the esophagus now this posteriorly directed out pouching right if you see any such out pouching coming out you know towards the posterior direction from the esophagus then it is zenker's diverticulum right another this this basically occurs at the kilian's dehiscence right at the weak point you know in the wall of the uh, pharynx there cricopharynx there and uh, you know another diverticulum which is known to occur along the esophagus is called as kilian jamison diverticulum but kilian jamison diverticulum is usually located directed antero laterally a zenker's diverticulum is usually directed posterior laterally a very typical history of uh, swelling over the neck when pressed giving a regurgitation sound the most common complication associated with zenker's diverticulum is aspiration is aspiration that is because of this content right which is there inside it will get aspirated eventually will give rise to aspiration pneumonia right so this is what is about zenker's diverticulum now if you look at dysphagia now this could be a part of the history that the examiner gives you if the examiner is giving you a history of progressive dysphagia which is more for solids than liquids then it usually suggests it points towards carcinoma esophagus but if the history of dysphagia is more for liquids than solids then it points more towards the diagnosis of achalasia cardia so dysphagia more for solids than liquids is usually pointing towards ca esophagus more for liquids than solids is pointing towards achalasia so here is a patient with dysphagia more for liquids you see a uniform smooth elongated tapering like a bird's beak at the lower esophageal sphincter so this is what is called as the bird beak sign of achalasia cardia so this is what is a bird beak sign of achalasia cardia whereas if you see an abrupt narrowing with mucosal irregularity as you can see there a short segment abrupt narrowing with marked mucosal irregularity that is because along the wall of the esophagus there is a mass right and this is the mass is going to have an irregular mucosal surface and this is what is giving rise to this appearance this is what is called as the rat tail appearance of ca esophagus so remember for your exams bird's beak sign is achalasia cardia rat tail appearance is ca esophagus yes so remember for ca esophagus if they ask you what is the overall investigation of choice then it is going to be endoscopy combined with biopsy because that is going to give you a you know definitive histopathological diagnosis if they ask you specifically what is the investigation of choice for staging then it is going to be pet ct because it will show you the malignancy it will help you detect whether there are any metastases which are present if they specifically ask you investigation of choice for tn staging right then it is going to be endoscopic ultrasound endoscopic ultrasound so overall investigation of choice is endoscopy and biopsy investigation of choice for uh staging is pet ct for tn staging specifically if they use these words then it is going to be endoscopic ultrasound now what is this appearance of the esophagus 
वेरी टिपिकल अपियरेंस राइट दिस इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज दी कॉर्क स्क्रू इसोफेगस और कर्लिंग इसोफेगस और रोजरी बीड इसोफेगस सीन इन डिफ्यूज इसोफेजियल स्पाजम अ वेरी पेनफुल कंडीशन इन विच देर आर इन वॉलेंट्री इन कॉर्डिनेटेड कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ऑफ द इसोफेगस सो गिविंग राइज टू दिस पर्टिकुलर अपियरेंस नाउ दिस डिफ्यूज इसोफेजियल स्पाजम विथ कॉर्क स्क्रू अपियरेंस ऑन बेरियम स्वेलो देर इज अनदर कंडीशन विच इज कॉल्ड नट क्रैकर इसोफेगस how to differentiate between them nutcracker esophagus is also a painful condition due to unco incoordinated contractions also presents with dysphagia the way to differentiate between them is that diffuse esophageal spasm on a barium swallow is going to show you this cork screw appearance whereas in nutcracker esophagus on a barium swallow study the appearance of the esophagus is absolutely normal so the diagnosis of nutcracker esophagus can be done only on manometry by which we can actually measure the pressure in the lumen of the esophagus whereas barium swallow in nutcrackers is absolutely normal diffuse esophageal spasm you see cork screw esophagus and also on manometry the pressure is going to be raised so look at this appearance if you look at the mucosal coating of the esophagus you can see these faint horizontal lines like a shiver so this is what is called as the esophageal shiver or feline esophagus this is something which is associated with contractions of this is associated with contractions of muscularis mucosae so muscularis mucosae layer there is a contraction so this gives rise to alternate bands along the mucosal uh, layer it is associated with reflux esophagitis so this is associated with so feline esophagus or esophageal shiver is associated with reflux esophagitis hiatus hernia it is also associated with eosinophilic esophagitis so reflux esophagitis hiatus hernia eosinophilic esophagitis so this is what the associations of feline esophagus or esophageal shiver now when the uh, g junction gastroesophageal junction is at least more than 2 cm above the esophageal hiatus into the thoracic cavity this is what is called as hiatus hernia so this is what is nothing but hiatus hernia where you can see the gastroesophageal junction is actually much significantly above the diaphragmatic hiatus it could either be a sliding type where you can see the g junction sliding up through the hiatus or it could be a rolling type which is more dangerous because the g junction is actually normal but a small portion of the fundus actually slides up adjacent to it this has a more probability of strangulation and complications the investigation of choice now for hiatus hernia is ct with oral contrast though i am showing you an image here of barium swallow initially it was done for diagnosis now the investigation of choice is considered to be ct with oral contrast yes now see this is a barium enema image showing you diverticulosis if you see there is multiple out pouchings right coming out from the colonic lumen these look like these teeth of the saw so this appearance is what is called as the saw tooth appearance so this is what is called as the saw tooth appearance or saw tooth sign if they ask you what is the investigation of choice for diverticulosis that is just the presence of diverticuli it could be detected very well on barium enema as you can see them here multiple diverticuli but if they ask you what is investigation of choice for diverticulitis that is inflammation that is because a particular diverticulum usually perforates there is fecal matter which comes out there is infection inflammation abscess formation when there is a small perforation there you cannot use barium because perforation is an absolute contraindication for the use of barium so in such cases the investigation of choice is going to be a contrast enhanced ct just for the presence of diverticula you can do a barium enema for diverticulitis investigation of choice is going to be contrast enhanced ct so this is your typical we've discussed this is the saw tooth sign of colonic diverticula 
सो पेशेंट प्रेजेंस विथ कॉन्स्टिपेशन एंड एन एप्पल कोर टाइप ऑफ अ फिलिंग डिफेक्ट along the colonic wall so this is in the distal sigmoid colon or the rectum this is what is called as the apple core sign of ca colon remember this is more predominantly seen in left sided colonic cancer so apple core sign is seen more commonly in the left sided colonic cancer so if you see this this barium enema image look at the colon the colon has you know lost its hostations that is the bowel wall markings what you see is a pipe like colon so this is given a name this is what is called as the lead pipe colon so lead pipe colon which is seen in ulcerative colitis a complication of ulcerative colitis what you must know is what is called as the toxic mega colon which is characterized by progressive dilatation of more than 6 cm dilatation of predominantly the transverse colon which is involved right usually with imminent perforation right so surgical treatment is the most definitive type of treatment right so this is lead pipe colon of ulcerative colitis now look at this question a 4 year old child presents with pain in abdomen and red current jelly stools that is a peculiar feature right usg and barium minima image is shown here what is the diagnosis so red current jelly stools in a child with pain in abdomen suggests into susception what are the imaging findings in into susception the most common sight into susception is what telescoping of one bowel into the other the most common sight of into susception remember is ileo colic so ileo colic is the most common site of intussusception now see when one bowel goes into the lumen of the other when we do a hydrostatic reduction by doing a barium minima you can see these wall you know these bowel wall folds being lined right by the contrast so this is what gives rise to the coiled spring appearance created by barium in the lumen of the intussusceptum when on ultrasound we see a transverse view you see an outer bowel inside it there is an inner bowel so this is called as the target sign or bull's eye sign or a donut appearance one ways of treating into susception because ileo colic is the most common type the ileum has come into the colon we introduce contrast through the rectum we do a barium enema or a contrast enema this is called hydrostatic reduction of into susception so when we put more and more contrast into the rectum as it travels in a retrograde manner the pressure increases within the lumen of the colon and so it tries to push the into susceptum out because of the increased pressure when it reaches the into susceptum it you know uh, surrounds the into susceptum like a claw like this and this contrast takes a shape like this here you can see this is called as the claw sign of into susception so this is what is the spectrum of findings that you'll find in into susception coiled spring target bull's eye donuts claw sign right so this is into susception now see here a 6 week old child presents with non bilious vomiting this is an important clue an olive shaped mass was felt in the epigastrium a barium meal study was done and is shown here so what is this you can see the fundus you can see the body which is distended a body of the stomach which is distended if you look at the area of the pylorus there is a very thin tract which is seen right that is because the pylorus is narrowed so what is this this is pyloric stenosis now let us look at it from a clinical perspective a child presents with vomiting now this could either be a newborn presents immediately at birth with bilious vomiting or it could be a child that presents at 6 to 12 weeks of age and as in our history here and with non bilious vomiting now both of these histories clinical profiles are taking you towards a different condition so if a child presents at birth then it is something which is congenital right something which is not developed at all and there is bilious vomiting which means if you see this is the stomach duodenum then the biliary tree opens here at d2 if there is bilious vomiting it means something distal to this has not formed and therefore all this bile is being vomited out 
So what is this? This part of the duodenum has not developed. So it will present at birth with bilious vomiting. This suggests a diagnosis of what? This suggests duodenal atresia. Whereas if a child was normal at birth, but presents six to eight weeks of age at six to 12 weeks of age, say after six weeks with non bilious vomiting, which means the obstruction is proximal to the opening of the biliary tree. So whatever is the content within the stomach will get vomited out. That is non bilious vomiting. We are looking at pyloric stenosis, right? Initially it was called congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Now we know it is not congenital, right? It develops later, presents at six to 12 weeks of age. So therefore now the word congenital has been dropped. It is just called as hypertrophic pyloric stenosis or infantile pyloric stenosis, hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Do you get the difference in the clinical profiles there? Now we come to uh, pyloric stenosis. So infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is the more correct term which is used for this now. Though barium, though barium meal Beg your pardon. So the barium meal image we are seeing here, which is showing the over distended right stomach with a very narrow pyloric canal there. The investigation of choice, if they ask you for pyloric stenosis diagnosis, it is now ultrasound. Why? Because it can be done at the bedside, right? Because it does not involve any radiation exposure. So a longitudinal length of the pyloric canal longitudinal length of the pyloric canal more than 16 millimeters and a muscle thickness of more than four to six millimeters is what suggests a diagnosis of pyloric stenosis if you look at the usg image here this is the stomach this is the content within the stomach if you see this is the pyloric canal and this is that hypertrophied muscle this is the length of the pyloric canal. This is what is the hypertrophied pyloric muscle there. Okay. Now, schematically on a barium meal study, a lot of named signs and appearances have been described. Now, because there is an obstruction at the pylorus here, the stomach is trying to push the content ahead by contracting vigorously. This appearance of the stomach is called as the caterpillar sign. The entrance of the pylorus looks like a beak. It is narrow. So this is called as the beak sign. The lumen of the pylorus is extremely narrow. So this is what is called as the string sign. And this hypertrophied muscle creates a projection into the duodenum, which looks like a mushroom. So that is called as the mushroom sign okay so these are various named signs that have been described in pyloric stenosis now we see the duodenal atresia on an x-ray abdomen you classically see two bubbles first is the stomach second is the proximal part of duodenum so this is what is called as your double bubble sign double bubble sign seen in duodenal atresia. So single bubble sign has been traditionally been described in pyloric stenosis, double bubble in duodenal atresia, triple bubble in jejunal atresia, multiple bubble sign in ileal atresias. So this is what is duodenal atresia, double bubble sign, newborn will present at birth with bilious vomiting. So we come back to this question. So this child does not present at birth, the child presents at six weeks with non bilious vomiting olive shaped mass is felt and seen over the epigastrium barium meal study was done which reveals a narrow pyloric canal so this is what this is hypertrophic pyloric stenosis yes so this is hypertrophic pyloric stenosis mm -hmm.